We're closing out today with a bit of a sobering report from County Manager Mark Schwartz on how the coronavirus has affected county revenues. Now, we may recall back in April, the manager presented a revised budget after the immediate shutdowns that took place Wow, a little more than six months ago now. Um, but he did warn at that time that he might have to come back to do some further revisions. And he did just that. What did you folks hear? So it was indeed sobering. And I was listening to your intro, actually. So this wasn't a decision that we made today at the board meeting. But I think in many ways, it was one of the most important issues that we dealt with. Um, it's it's preparing ourselves and preparing our community and, and letting them know what we face. So yes, the manager, you know, the, way back when uh, in uh, March or so, he threw out his 410 plus pages of the budget carefully prepared, which, you know, as Mark had said, was a um, a, a quaint artifact of history, <laughs> and we embarked on this adventure. So uh, what he did say is, so that budget that he presented was kind of like an addendum of 12 pages, which we finally adopted, and we were planning to come back, and this is our first time to come back and see how things are actually going. At that time, um, staff was sort of thinking that, you know, our revenues were going to take a dive, boom, and then we were going to re kind of recover from the virus, and we're going to come back up. Well, we all know that the virus is not going away anyway, anytime soon. And that's a whole issue on the obviously how we're handling it as a nation on the federal level and everything else. Um, but what's happened is we went a dive and then we're kind of coming up, but it's kind of a slow increase. And some sectors, of course, are not recovering at all right now. Um, so revenues are down even more. Um, and it's looking like we have a really significant shortfall um, for, you know, gap for this year. And of course, we cannot run a deficit. So already a good number of months into the, the fiscal year starts in July, already here in September, we're down, I think the total is about 60 million. I think for us, it's 28 to 38 million. And then that there's a gap for the schools, you add it all together, we're looking at, you know, $60 million gap, plus or minus, and we have to make that up right. somehow before the end of the fiscal year, which is next July. So we have a number of levers and um, that was kind of presented with our thing, you know, we have every year we have carryover. Um, so the carryover usually goes to help build the next budget, make it a little easier, and also goes into um, a few major issues like affordable housing um, and allows us to in increase our, our affordable housing investment fund. Um, this year, I think probably a lot more of it's going to go into just simply filling this budget gap that we've got, but it doesn't begin to fill it. Um, we have uh, gotten some, you know, pulling back on uh, on expenses and what we're doing. We may need to be doing more of that. So this is just kind of a little foreshadow going for um, the presentation that we're going to be getting in October when we will know more. Um, and then I'll, I'll turn it over to Katie because I'm sure she's got, you know, some, it's, it's interesting, we're kind of different. I've, this is my 24th budget, I, maybe my 25th. I've got to figure out coming up, it'll be my 25th. This is the hardest one I've ever seen. I'm anticipating it being really rough next year. So much depends on what happens in November. So what we're planning on now is no more money from the federal government, which is what part of what makes this really hard. And the money we have gotten so far, which has been helpful, has to be spent by the end of December, by the end of the calendar year, and it has to go for certain expenses. So it doesn't help us backfill some of these huge gaps that we have. If um, the Democrats, you know, win and we win big in November and can start controlling how this country runs a bit, I think there'll be a lot more support for local governments. We certainly, while we're hurting, a lot of places are hurting a whole lot more than we are. I mean, I keep reminding myself, if this is tough for us, what is it like for places that don't have, you know, we have some contingency funds. We've got some things we can fall back on. A lot of places do not. Um, so that is fascinating. If it ends up that, the, that you know, we, we don't win big or, you know, maybe we maybe we take the White House, but we don't take the Senate or something like that, or God forbid we don't take the White House, um, then I think it's going to be really, really difficult. We will be in a very different world um, and we'll have to deal with that. But I'm still hopeful for November and hopeful we will get through this, but it's not going to be easy. So, Katie, I, I've kind of gone along. Like, what's what's no, your no, perspective? No, no, no. Yeah. You know, I do think one thing that maybe is worth noting about what you just shared is, you um, you're absolutely right, right? There's a restrictions on what those relief dollars from the, the first and only 
relief package can be spent on. But I think it's really important to, to note that they can be spent on eviction prevention, food assistance, social services. And so we have been incredibly committed uh, to those activities, allocating at this point millions of dollars to make sure that people don't lose their housing, don't go hungry, that our kids do have access to the internet. Um, that is a, a good use of that, that relief money. We will continue to do that. And so for anybody who may be dependent um, or, or in need of those resources from the county, I think that's one of the most important things that we can communicate um, because that is uh, an allowable use of CARES money. It will not be subjected to cutbacks. We are, cutbacks, we are still here to help. Yeah. Um, and, I and I think, think yeah, even you're- Even if the CARES money stops, I think mm -hmm. we're determined. Yeah. Yeah, and I think, you know, from here, um, I think you're right, Libby, we do have options, right? We have what might be closeout money. I know the schools will as well. Um, our manager maintains a COVID contingent. Um, I know there is wishful thinking in some sectors of the community that we've got a, a giant pile of break glass in case of emergency money. <laughs> that is not the case. And I know that our partners in schools don't either. Um, but I do know at this point, and, and I think you were right to point out, um, this wasn't a vote or a board item, it was just an update. At this point, our management and finance team are working with our manager, are working with the superintendent and the school's finance team um, to try to make sure that our estimates are as accurate and frankly conservative as possible um, and and to, to try to understand that the different sources of funds we might be able to tap into or the hopefully relatively painless cuts that could be made in fiscal 21. Um, there's not an, an imminent action before either the county board or school board to, to um, make big cuts in our adopted fiscal 21 budgets. Right. And I think get the best information and a real update will be in November. I mean, just traditionally, that's when a lot of the numbers start to become a lot clearer because of the taxes and things. And that will be after the election. So I'm hoping by November we'll have a better idea. October will, you know, as time goes forward, we get we get better and better pictures of what what's happening and where we're going to be. But uh, it's still uh, we know it's going to be difficult. We don't know how difficult. But I think, Katie, as you pointed out, we're working really closely with our partners in the school system, um, and we are absolutely determined to make sure that people are not out on the street or going hungry. Um, and uh, we're going to continue to work forward. It's just going to be not easy, not easy. Sure. And the loss of revenue is coming from such a mix of sources. You have your property taxes, you have your sales taxes, you have the transient occupancy taxes, since people are not staying in hotels as often as we had anticipated or hoped they would. Um, and I guess the big question is we just don't know how long we're going to be in this kind of situation. No, we don't. We, it's, and it's been interesting that some, some sectors have done pretty well. You know, it turns out, I think we're more, I think I read some, we're more able to work virtually here than anywhere else in the country. We've got more people who can work virtually. <clears throat> so obviously that's an advantage. We've got some, some businesses, they're doing just fine. Um, Amazon would obviously be one of the examples, right? Mm -hmm. So there are a number of businesses here, companies here that are doing that are doing well. Um, we have enough the way our restaurants have pivoted and all of the work that our AED um, and our, 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 our CPHD have been doing, our you know our technical staff have been doing to help them have the outside seating. We are working to find a way for <clears throat> for restaurants to maybe do some covered or, or, or uh, protected seating even in the in the winter months. Um, working very closely with the business community. So <clears throat> a lot of places are not doing as badly as you would think. It's the hotels um, and such that have really done badly. Uh, you know, and then finally, <clears throat> excuse me, the spending. Um, you know, spending has not been so bad because we have so many people in protected jobs. So people who work for the federal government, their salaries continue to come in. People who work for companies that aren't affected, their salaries keep. So we managed to keep the economy going um but we want to make sure we do as, as best we can to bring along the sectors that are hurting but as time goes on it drags us down more and more so sure. we'll sure. okay well on that note that will bring us to the end of another county board wrap up libby and katie thank you both very much for joining us today we will be back in october with another county board wrap up with the latest deep dive on the board's actions until then Stay safe, don't forget to register to vote, and if you prefer to apply for that mail-in ballot for the November 3rd election, just visit the county website, arlingtonva.us, for more information. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you in October. Thanks a lot. Take care. Thank Wear those masks.